1 John chapter 4. I love to come down and worship with people. And I tell you what, you're going to have to, you better worship with your eyes closed or eyes opened in this church. And uh, it's a little dangerous around here. I like it though. It makes me feel at home. And uh, uh, I, I'm telling you, your music, sound, I just, I know y'all think I say this everywhere, but I promise you I don't. I'm always thankful to go everywhere, but my goodness, I am blown away by what God's doing in this place. And uh, just to come here, I just, Lord, don't let me mess it up tonight. Don't let me mess it up tonight. I could tell when I was giving the scriptures uh, to the young man that was making sure everything was good with us and, and all of that, I, I gave him a ton. I said, don't worry, I'm not going to read all of them. And I was scared he was going to send them to pastor, and pastor would think immediately he's going to preach over 40 minutes. And uh, I know one thing about Pastor Tuttle. Now, if God's moving after 40 minutes, go on and do it. But if, if you're just going to preach for 40 minutes and not say nothing, you better stop. Cause I don't know if it's him or Sister Pastor that won't let you come back, but I, I promise you, I promise you, I'm going to try to behave myself tonight. And uh, I haven't preached but one time since uh, in, in 2024. So good luck. First John chapter 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now, everybody say even now, already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater, somebody shout greater, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want to talk from this thought just for a few minutes tonight in Jesus' name, hopefully. When the ceiling becomes the floor. When the ceiling becomes the floor. Would you put your Bibles down, lift your hands with me, and let's ask the Lord to help us in this place today. Father, there's no doubt you're here tonight. Lord, I'm thankful for the miracles that you have already done. Thank you for the worship, Lord, that the spirit of worship that's been in this place. God, I pray that you would do what only you can do. We bind every spirit of doubt, fear, confusion, every spirit that would exalt itself above your knowledge. We take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. Do what only you can do. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Would you put your hands together? Come on, would you shout? Would you lift up your voice above that hand clap? Come on, shout to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in Jesus' name tonight. I'm so excited tonight to be into a place, to be here tonight at a place that you can feel the overwhelming passion. In fact, if you were to read the Bible, you would find that the Bible teaches us that this devil has been cast down with great wrath. But I'm thankful tonight that I'm in a place where I feel greater passion than he has wrath. And I want you to understand something. We're not on the losing side of this ball game. And we're not, we're not a church that has been defeated. We're not a church that has been pushed down. We are a church that is going to, somebody shout it, possess the land. Our time, our moment, and God's getting ready to do something big. Not just tonight, 
but he's ready to do something big on this property. You can feel every prophecy aligning in this church. It's as if God has pulled the string over this church and everything's aligning to the right place at the right time. Is there opposition? Yeah, but it's not really opposition. Is there really problems? Yeah, there's some problems in this place tonight, but there wasn't enough problems to keep you out of this house tonight. You might have limped in, but you're going to shout out you might have walked in discouraged, but when you walk out of this place again tonight, just like you do every Sunday, just like you do every prayer meeting, just like you do every Wednesday night, you're going to walk out prophesying that God is with you and God is able and God is going to do what only God can do. We must get a revelation of these two kingdoms, the contrast between the kingdom of God and the so-called kingdom of hell. And I believe there's two scriptures in the Bible that leans in and gives us a little visual of how God sees things. The first one is 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. The Bible teaches us that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Everybody say the eyes. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in, everybody say in, in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect. Aren't you thankful it didn't stop there? But it teaches us that holiness is not a destination, but it is a pursuit whose heart is perfect toward him. Somebody that's going in the right direction. And I want you to see right from the very beginning that God is telling you that when he looks down upon your life, he is looking from the position of power and authority. He never has to leave his throne to check on his people. His, his power is never compromised at any time. No matter what you're going through, the eyes of the Lord are looking at you from the position of power. But Job tells us, it said the Bible, it said the Lord said unto Satan, Job 1 and 7, he said, which comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going, everybody say going, to and fro in the earth and from walking, everybody say walking, walking up and down in it. It's revealing to us that the only power that the enemy has is presence and past. He has no power of authority. He has no position of authority. But he is walking looking and he only can remind you of your past or meet you in your presence present he is trying God is trying to tell you that the only way the enemy has power over you is if you open that door so we've got the contrast of two kingdoms we've got the one that looks down with power and we've got the other kingdom that only walks in the authority that is given to him by the people of God but I've come here tonight to tell you I don't think I'm going to give him any place here tonight come on I'm telling you I don't feel like I'm going to let him in I'm not going to let him in my marriage I'm not going to let him get around my kids I'm not going to let him in my home I don't think I'm giving him access. Somebody say access denied. You can just go on and do what you're going to do, but I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve the Lord with everything that's in my heart. Now, now I got to get to preaching, but I want you, I want you to understand something. I get worried about people always looking for devils. I, I don't like the devil. Huh? I don't like the devil. I don't want. I don't care about seeing the devil. I'm not looking for the devil. I'm not tracing the devil. I'm not pursuing the devil. I'm not. I don't even like talking to the old thing. 
And you, you got to think about this. When Jesus died, the Bible said he walked down and he took the keys to death and hell. But when he was getting ready to build his church on the rock, the Bible said that he gave Peter the keys not to hell. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Here's what he gave Peter. He said, I'm going to give you something far more important than keys to hell. I'm going to open the heavens to you. Come on, I'm going to tell you. You listen to me. I know we have prayer meetings and we're trying to find out the name of the spirit that's got vine or bound up. It's sin. I'll go ahead and tell you what it is. But I'm telling you, God has given you keys to heaven and God has opened the heavens up to do something in this place that's greater. Greater than anything. Greater. Somebody said, oh, yes, he has. And our problem is, our problem is we are too busy looking at the wrong things. Now, now when, when, when the Lord met with Moses, here's what the Lord said. He said, I've seen the affliction of my people, and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. God said, I'm looking at my people, and I'm seeing what the enemy's doing to my people. And Moses, I'm raising you up because you're going to deliver them out of what the enemy is doing in their lives. Come on, I'm telling you, I want to see and hear what God sees in here. Come on, God heard their cry. God saw their affliction. And he said, I've got to get them out. Isn't it amazing that God spends more time trying to get you out? Come on, you hear me. He's not fighting against you. He's trying to do something for you. He, he, he's not fighting against you. He's trying to pull you out. I promise you I'm going somewhere. He said, those verses I read to you tonight, verse 4 of, of 1 John 4, he tells him, he said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater, somebody shout greater. greater. Oh, God, I wish you could understand that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're fighting. God is always greater. Some people just love to snuggle with struggle. I don't think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snuggle with my wife. I'm not going to snuggle with trouble. I'm not going to snuggle with these, this struggle. I'm not, I'm not going to give it any. I'm not going to sit there and testify about how strong it is and how bad it is because I know what is in me is greater than what is around me. It's greater. It's greater than divorce court. It's greater than my kids being bound by drugs and alcohol and perversion. I'm telling you, it's greater than what this world has to offer. I'm telling you, it's greater than anything that you can imagine. There's not a devil that can stop God. There's not a sickness that can stop God. There's not a bondage that can stop God. God can do greater. Somebody shout greater. Can I tell you, can I tell you the problem is how we look at things, how we see things. Do you know what that verse literally means? That God is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on. We go around here and we preach these conferences and we act like God needs us. Like God needs our eyes. That's not why he's greater in you. You need his vision. It has nothing to do with your ability and everything to do with the way he sees things. 
Y'all gonna make me stop right here for a little bit, aren't you? I want to skip over this. But I'm telling you, when you start seeing the thing the way God wants you to see, you'll look at a prison cell like a harvest field. Prison cells won't take your faith. They'll make you pray and your prayer will turn into a song of praise. Oh yeah. Last thing you want to do is put me in trouble because when I come out of trouble, I don't come out of trouble by myself. When I come out of trouble, somebody's coming with me. Somebody's going to see the faithfulness of God. Somebody, you think about it. When they started praying, I, I like that kind of prayer that turns into singing. Huh? We spend more time in Pentecost singing that turns into prayer. We try to meet God at sorrow. Huh? Like he's our, he's our boyfriend. Or... Most people don't come to an altar of repentance. They come to an altar of sorrow. They know they're ignorant, but they don't want change. Oh, y'all don't say ignorant in Texas. I thought everything was big in Texas. I know y'all got some ignorant people somewhere. Huh? They might not be here tonight, but they kin to you somewhere. I said that one time, I said, somebody just shout a name, and some lady stood up and shouted her name. Shouted her name, it was her husband's name, but she shouted that's a lie, that's a lie. Somebody gonna go tell that story for the truth. I, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. Prayer that turns into singing, it births something in us. Oh God, help me right now. You know, you wanna know why your worship was so powerful in this place besides y'all got great singers, great music, great musicians, and they're anointed. You know why it was so powerful? It was because that prayer fed that song prayer pushed up the expectation level I don't know why pastor pounds on prayer because he's trying to get the expectation level up and here's what I know people that know how to pray they'll know how to sing and they'll know how to shake something to a point that they'll see souls saved and you want to know what happened when they baptized that jailer he went and got some water some sop and he started healing the wounds of Paul and Silas you want to know why your pastor preaches about harvest all the time because that's how the people of God get healed Something happens when your kids come back home. Something happens when your neighbors pray back through. Something happens. When the harvest, when the harvest, when the harvest takes place. Now, I, I, I've got to hurry, I promise you. I, I want you to understand something about God. God's going to meet you on your level. He don't want anybody in this place to go to hell. We act like God's some far, some far thing that we can't reach. But I'm going to tell you how powerful God is. Thomas said, I, I won't believe it. I know I, I don't trust you guys. I don't trust your words. I've got to see him for myself. I'm going to tell you something about God. God will walk through doors of unbelief. There's not, I'm talking to some mama right now. There's not a door of unbelief that can stop God from walking through it. But see, you got to choose how you want to see God. He walk, now, I'm going to just be honest with you. If, if the Lord would have walked through the door, I think God said, hey, I'm good. I don't need to see no scar. I mean, if he's walking through the door, I think I, that's cool. I'm good. I'm good, but some people, the supernatural will never convince them. Only the scars. And I don't want to live that way. I want to live with people that think in being apostolic is just nothing but a painful commitment. I had a lady one time grab me at, at, at the church I pastor somewhere on planet Earth. Don't, don't call them. Hey, she's still alive. 
She walked up to me one time. She said, Pastor, she said, I'm telling you right now. She said, if I get to heaven and I find out I didn't have to do none of this stuff, the first one I'm going to find I'm looking for is you. I said, ma'am, don't worry about that. You ain't going to go. I promise I did. I said, don't worry. You don't, you, you don't even need to worry about it. There's not no if. If, if, if I'm the first person you want to see in heaven, you, I promise you you're not going. Now that's good preaching. I don't care who's preaching it. Even if it is a kid from Louisiana. But some people, they're not going to, all they're going to do is believe God through pain. What a miserable way to walk around here to come to church where you lip out because you have to. What a miserable thing to come in to feel guilty about having to go to prayer. I don't go to the prayer room because I feel guilty. I go to the prayer room because I get to talk to him. I'm not walked in this place saying, oh, here's my little broke up body. Here's my little, I've walked in this place saying, thank you for deliverance. Thank you. See, if you, if you want to live and only serve God through pain, you're going to find yourself eating the crumbs off the master's table. I don't want to eat the crumbs off. I want to sit at the table. And some people can call that ignorant, but I call that my father. I'm not arrogant or ignorant. I just want to see God the way he wants to be seen. And here's what he told Thomas. He said, I've let you touch my hands. I've put your hand in my side. He said, Thomas, you believe because you've seen, but there's a group of people that's got a little bit more blessing on them. They believe and they not seen. Woo! Oh, y'all don't want to help me right now. And that's what this church is looking past right now. You're pulling back a veil to territory you've never taken before. It's not because anything was wrong with the past. It's because you've caught up with the prophetic time clock of today. And God is saying, I've got something for you. But you're not going, you've got to believe it before you see it. If you want the double blessing. Y'all don't want to help me right now? I'm telling you, I can preach through it. If you want the devil blessing, somebody's got to see we're not just getting money for a new sanctuary. We're going to go ahead and build the whole thing. Why? Because God's taking us to places we've never seen before. God, come on, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I want that double blessing. I want that blessing that has leaned into what God desires for me. You know what I've figured out? I will compromise and belittle what God had prepared for me. If I leave it to my own mind. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. Everybody say above all. No, you got to say it like you, with some Texas conviction. Above all. Above. Act like you're holding on to your rifle right now. Above all. Above. That we ask or think. I, talk, I walked in my office. I'm telling you, I was so mad at the devil this week. Bishop, I walked in my office. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, God. I'm fixing, master, I'm fixing to match the devil's wrath with my passion. I'm, I'm fixing to outwork the, I'm fixing to let the devil know that I've got more commitment to God than he's got wrath on my community. And I said, I'm going to tell you right now, God, I'm not just asking you for the things that you showed me. I want you to release things that I can't even see. Oh, yeah. I want you to go back generations that I didn't even know were lost. I want you to go back and revive. I want you to bring up seed that I didn't sow. I want you, come on, I'm telling you, I want it all. But here's a problem. He said God's able to do abund exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. 
But he didn't stop there. He said, according, everybody say according, according. to the power that worketh in us. <laughs> You're not hearing me. See, what you don't know is God's design is that it's working in you more than you can even think or comprehend it. That big, that big. You're not hearing me. Pastor Tuttle's one of the greatest preachers of faith I've ever heard. I'm telling you right now, I could name sermon after sermon. The Duke can preach about hell and five people get raised from the dead. He's the best faith preacher in our movement, bar none. There's not another, there's not one even close. If they claim to be close, they're all lying. He can, but I'm telling you that God wants to do even abundantly, exceedingly, abundantly more than he's even showed him. God, I feel it right now. Come on, come on, come on. Is there anybody who say, yeah, yeah, that's my family. Yeah, that's my business. Yeah, that's my territory. Yeah, that's everything in me. Yeah, yeah, I see it, I see it, I see it. Somebody say, I see it. Man, I'm skipping so much. I, I want to get you, I want to I I get there. You, you, you got to get it in your mind that there's churches that are going to be blessed on a 30-fold level and there's churches that are going to be blessed on a 60-fold level. But there are churches and people that are going to be blessed on a 100-fold. This is a 100-fold church. No, I needed about 15 men to run around and say, we're a 100-fold church in this place. Our businesses, our church family, miracles are breaking out. Healings are going to take place. Come on, people are going to get the Holy Ghost. Come on, God's going to do it in abundance. Come on, would you lift your hands? Would you lift up your voice? Y'all got more wisdom. I don't know how you take five loaves and two fishes and turn it into 12 baskets. I mean, I don't know how you get 12 baskets out, out of one lunch. Huh? But I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you, this church might not figure that out, but this is going to be a 12-basket church. Hey, y'all, y'all don't want to invite her. I'll take it back to West Monroe. I want it. I don't want just enough to feed. I want enough to take gold to the other side with me. I want enough for the whole journey. I need to get there. I, 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 I need to get I need to get there. I, I don't understand it. But Abraham, here Abraham is. He's having a vision from God. God comes down. Now you got a picture of this. God comes down in his tent, takes him to a vision. And here's what he says to Abraham. He said, Abraham, he said, man, fear not, Abraham. Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And the Lord said, what will thou I mean, he is speaking a prophetic word to Abram. And Abram, Abram's sitting there thinking, you're my shield, Lord. You're my strength. I ain't got no kids. I got a promise. And he starts talking about this, this, this servant of him. And he said, I'm fixing to have to leave everything I own to them. God, what are you talking about? And see, that's how we are. We start looking at our what we got right now, and we start thinking, my God, I don't understand. You know what you need to quit doing? You, you, you need to quit counting all the negative stuff and start considering the loaves that's been left over 
from, from five loaves and two fishes. Did you ever think you'd be right here? Some of you are at this church and this is the last thing on your mind was Vider, Texas. But God put you here. You wanna know why God put you here? Cause he knows how to build an army. Oh yeah. Now, now, I know somebody in this place might not know what they have here. But I can tell you, I'm not one of those pull up your sock kind of preachers. But when I go to a place that's got it, you're gonna find my hide right down there in the front and I'm gonna say, God, put the hider on me. Let me take some of it back to, I was sitting here saying, God, any leftovers, any, any crumbs, put, I wanna go, I want, you're not hearing me right now. I'm telling you what God's doing in this place. Come on, it's special. What God's doing in this place is gonna overflow. So Abraham starts complaining. Come here, Brother Bridger. Come here, sit, sit down. Hey, did y'all build those or y'all buy? Here's my ED. I'm sorry. Did y'all build those or y'all buy those? My God, send me some construction marks. Y'all sit down right there. He's sitting there complaining. You're Abram. You know, look, hey, get that look on your face. Come to church. Let me just tell you something. I've learned if you're not careful, it's not discernment. I got, I got preachers that preach for me. They act like they can discern things and all they can look at is facial expressions. Woo, that prophet. No, he just read your old sour face. Well, I'm doing good preaching right now. I mess up something, won't I? He's sitting there. In this vision now, in this vision, God finally just says, y'all don't know what this means. McFly, McFly. Y'all don't know, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I got some carnal people in this place. <laughs> he looks at Abram and said, look, look, listen to me. Your problem is what's hindering your view. Come here. He said, let me lead you out of this. Let me get you out of your tent you got a ceiling for a roof right now. And you can't see what I want to show you. I want you to step out and I want you to, I want you to look up at those stars. And basically he said, I want you to try to count them. Woo, come on. There's going to be a day that this church won't ever have a ceiling. I'm going to make some of you financial people mad. There's going to be a day there won't be a budget in this church. I, hey, hey, I'm going to take that prophecy home with me. That, that, there's going to be a day where all you going to get out from underneath those things that's been hindering you. And you're going to look up and you're going to really see what God wants to do. And it's going to be so big, you can't count it. It's going to be so big that you're not going to know what to do with it. Hey, you know you're a great church. You're going you're gonna to love this. Because I know what y'all have to do properly. You know you're a great church when you don't have an answer but for 1% of your problems. God's got to answer the, the other 99%. Where are we going to put the people? Not enough Sunday school room. Not enough school space. Not a big enough parking lot. People got to come early. Prayer. People are taking their seats. How dare those people pray? Some of you won't pray because you're scared somebody's going to get your seat. Hey, I ain't getting mad. Thank you for showing up 45 minutes early. You can pray where you sit. You may be seated. But I'm telling you right now, that's a problem. We're going to let God solve it. <laughs> Musicians, come on. This don't mean anything. All this means is this is I'm closing. According to Pastor, Pastor, I'm closing. I, I don't think I've been preaching 40 minutes. If I have, please have me. Oh, I got six minutes. 
Hey, is that really my time? That's awesome. Like, does that work? Okay. Does that work? Like, do they quit preaching when that goes off? Uh, I ain't going to waste the money then. <laughs> see, you, 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 you got to see it the way God sees it. Now, now I, I want you to understand, these, these, these four men had to be from Bader. These four guys, they had to be Vitermites. We call them Balkamites in our place. These would be Vitermites. Not to be confused with the Amalekites. Your pastor would kill me if I called y'all Amalekites. These are Vitermites. Huh? These four dudes looking at them, they said, Jesus is preaching. He's in this house over there. And they look at this dude and they said, well, let's get him to Jesus. Hey, it takes four people to win one soul. Y'all hear me? Four people to get one person to Jesus. That's why when you see somebody, one of your friends brings a guest, you need to go join yourself to that guest. Four people. They start, they start, when they get to the house, I don't know about you, I'm gonna tell you right now, I got a security team at my church. You'd think, my God, they were special forces. They, they got the hallway secure, the bathroom secure. They telling people, my God, we got to do this, we got to do that. And I, I'm cool, whatever, just don't run nobody off. But the other day I got some dude right in the middle of us making an announcement. He's standing at the platform. He's trying to tell the drummer he loves him. He's doing this. And I, think, I look at my assistant pastor. I said, how long are we going to let that dude do hand signs? I said, I don't think, are those gang signs? He said, no, Pastor, he, those are, I love you. I can't see. I said, my God. I said, we got the security team, and we ain't got nobody walked up there. Ask that dude what he's doing. I was like, you go take care of it. He goes, I'm not the security team. <laughs> but what y'all didn't know, I'm a prophet. I said, I don't care. <laughs> anyway, and when I pointed, he walked. So... I walked up and, and he said, hey man, what's going on? He said, oh, I just want this drummer to know I love him. He's doing such a great job. So he went down, put him at the seat. Dude prayed, jumped around, worshiped. He come back over there to me. I said, what What'd you tell him? He said, I didn't tell him nothing. He told me he's having a, he was just trying to tell the drummer he's doing a great job and they loved him. I said, what'd you do? He said, I put him right there on the third row. And I was like, yeah, I'll do right where he put him. I was like, you did that in spite. He said, yes, sir, I did. He'd been back. Thank God he's not doing sign language to the drummer. But I got security. These dudes got security at the door. Y'all think, see, I used to, before I got 48, I could tell five stories at one time. Now I forget. Y'all are worried to death right now. They walk up to this house. It's full, and the security said, hey, no room. Fire marshals, cut it off. Somebody said, I don't know why we're building a church, because the fire marshal about to come. So I'm like, just give me air conditioner room with video. Uh, that's not church. Uh, I, <laughs> I didn't make sure I'm at the right place. I'm hurrying. They walk up, they ain't got no, they ain't got no room. And one of them guys, I don't know which one was. It had to be the one that lived in Viter the longest. He said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're gonna climb on this roof. And we're gonna tear the roof off. I'm like, no windows, the roof. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of worried about the dude that they're fixing to drag up the roof. So two of them climb up to the roof. I don't know how it really happened, but I mean, I'm going to write a commentary one day, so I guess this can be as true as theirs. Two of them climb the roof, and they, they, two of them stay down to make sure, and he's, he's getting up. His eyes are this big. They get him on the roof. The other two climb up. They start breaking things out. I don't know what the roofs were made out of back then. I mean, you're going to have to get Brother Woodward or somebody to come tell you that one day. But they're, they're, tearing, they're tearing the roof off. And they start lowering this dude down. And all of a sudden, the service, it went from shout now to what in the world. 
they put their cell phones down. Can you believe that? They like put that. They're looking up there, and that dude's coming down. And something in this text, it amazed me because God did not respond to the need. I'm so sick of being a part of things that only respond to need. God didn't respond to the need. Now, he ended up taking care of the need. But the Bible's clear, and it said the Bible said that he saw their faith. So he healed that man's need. Their faith, that man's need. How does your faith heal somebody else's need? I'm gonna tell you how. The ceiling has to become the floor for your faith to heal somebody else's need. Oh my God, you're missing it right now. And I'm telling this church right now that some of you need to step on the ceiling and say no more. Are you the ceiling in this church anymore? Oh, there'll be a million dollar offering. Oh, there'll be a two million dollar offering. Oh, there'll be a 14 million dollar offering. Oh, there'll be an 18 million dollar offering. Why? because we're about to step on the ceiling. Why? Because we've got some needs in Vider that need touching, that need to be healed, that need to be delivered. Come on. We need to make our ceiling our new, our new floor. Lift your hands with me right now. He Somebody needs to take a step up in the way you see things. I don't like to be spooky. But this ain't spooky, this is prophetic. When I was sitting here Worshiping the Lord. That powerful opening. It was all powerful, but right there in the, at the beginning. I saw this vision, and I saw, I, I can't tell you how many ants, but it was so many ants that it covered this, this big old sheet of paper. And I watched how it would go to one side. It would start, and you could just see it was like a little wave, and you could see a little bit apart the paper before they consumed it but all these ants was consuming the paper you hear me and I knew immediately in the spirit the paper those ants was on was the plans to this building those ants consuming it I knew immediately what the spirit was what I didn't know what was underneath when it got through with that paper, all of a sudden, a bigger sheet of paper came. And the ants started doubling and tripling. And they consumed the paper, and I could tell it was building plans. They consumed that paper. And, under, and it just kept happening sheet after sheet after sheet. I want you to understand today that there's not a single person in this church that's going to be left out of participating in what God's coming. It's not about money. It's about effort. It's about sacrifice. Well, I just don't have much to offer. Oh, yes, you do. I just don't know what I can do. Oh, yes, you. There's something you can do. Acts 10. Acts 10 is my favorite 
my favorite man, and I'm so sorry, is my favorite, my favorite book of Acts chapter. And I, man, it's hard to pin down one, but I like Acts chapter 10 because how God sets up, sets it up. You got this dude that's prayed, he's given alms, he's prayed so much that, that his alms, uh, his prayer has turned into a memorial before God. God said, I'm going to honor his prayer. This dude was so cool, he was in an Italian band. Played like an olive garden. I don't know if that's true, but his prayer reaches up and God says, God goes and visits him and he warns him. Now, look, I'm just for I'm from Balcomville. I'm not I'm I'm not cityfied, glorified. You can tell by I don't even speak English. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not no big dog, but I can tell you right now, I know what warn means. It means give notice of danger. This angel comes to this man and he's warning. I'm giving him notice of danger. And he tells him, I want you to send for this man by the name of Peter. This man is on Simon the Tanner's rooftop. <laughs> I love rooftop preachers. He's preaching on Simon the Tanner's roof. He's praying. He's, he's fasting. He, this preacher is, is, is praying, fasting, on Simon, everybody say Simon. Simon the Tanner's roof. And he's watching dead animals come in. And they would take the, the skin off and clean it. And they would send it back out. The Jews hated him, but he was making the dead usable. It was a house of transformation. Walked in dead, walked out usable. And he's sitting there watching this and God shows him this big sheet knitted together with all these unclean beasts on it. And he shows it to Peter because he's about to deal with Peter's mind. He's trying to tell him, I want to take the, I want to take the gospel to a different group. <laughs> Woo, shit up. And I'm going to tell you right now, you got a rooftop preacher. Pastor Tuttle don't have a ceiling. He just has a floor. You got a man that's preaching, hey, we're not, we're not, we're not fishing with lines anymore. We're fishing with sheets. There'll be all kinds of people. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Don't you ever get deceived that this church is not changing the spiritual thermometer of this area something happened come on there's going to be other apostolic churches that have revival from your overflow Here's my question to you, and we're about to pray for one another. Could I get the five-fold ministry if you've been approved to pray for people? Would you just come get on this platform here tonight? I wanted to take this high, but we're about to pray impartation. I want you to hear me today. Here's the question that God's asking this church. Will you get on the roof today? Will you leave what you think is stability and trust God? to open yourself to the heavens is there anybody that wants to get on the roof with your pastor with the man of God and say I, that's my family coming in this church oh I see it Vider's about to change in this place you're going to have hey you're going to have effect on the hospitals you're going to have effect on false doctrine. Come on, you're going to change the apostolic movement. Does anybody want to get on the roof right now? I want you to lift your hands with me right now before we go pray for everybody. Come on, I want you to lift up your voice. Could you pray right now? Come on, I need some moms and dads to go in travail right now. 
Hinaba. Come on, I need some young couples to say, God, I'm selling out to it tonight. Come on, I need some people to say, I'm giving it all. I'm getting on the rooftop. Men of God, would you pray? Would you find somebody? Come on. Come on, I want you to pray right now. Y'all go ahead. Would you pray with the people tonight? Oh, Come on, come on, reach. Come on, reach. Hidamaya. Shilamaha. God, pull every prophecy up. Pull every word that's been spoken. Pull every word that's been spoken in this church throughout its history. Every promise you ever gave Bishop Edwards. Every promise, God, that you've spoken to Pastor Tuttle. God, pull it up today. Let this be the moment. Let this be the time. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Hina ba yala ba ha. 